Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. At the same time, pressing the little like button is a good thing too. So thank you for all of that. I'm here working on uh, Jim's motorcycle still with Jim. Hey. And in our last video, uh, we put the heads on. No. What did we do last? Yes. Yes. We put the heads on last. That's what we did. I don't know. Seems uh, like we cam, did something cam, else. Yeah, the cam gear and the cam seal. That's it. So we yeah, put in the new cam up. bearing and we put in the new cam cam cover seal. And since both of those are done, we're ready to put in the cam. Now there's a lot of discussion as since the motor is this far apart, what's the easiest way to do it? I mean, as far as putting things on in the order you go, do I put everything in the bottom first or do I put everything in the top first? Um, you know, a lot of these things require some monkey motion, but what I'm going to do is install the cam first. Close up the cam chest, and then we'll put in the rockers and all that other stuff. Now, the first thing I want to do is, uh, if you remember back in a couple of videos ago, I did take out the tappet screen, and Jim washed it, and we're going to put that back in again. I consider the tappet screen a very important part. It keeps debris from getting into your hydraulic valve lifters, and that's a good thing. I generally, when I service a motorcycle, what I do is I take the tappet screen out whenever I change oil, and I clean it. It's just that simple. It's not hard to do. Uh, I'm pretty high tech. I spray some alcohol on it and blow it out with an air hose. That's pretty high tech. So I'm putting it back in. This is not the original plug. The original plug is slotted like a normal screwdriver slot. And to really get it out without too much effort, you need to have a, what they call a drag link screwdriver, which is an end you put on a on a ratchet or a breaker bar and it fits that slot. I like to change for one of these one of these aftermarket plugs that I can put a wrench on. And there's a nice fresh o-ring in there. And it's sealed up good and tight. I only put it on now because I'm doing other things here and I prefer not to have an open hole there. So what I'm going to do now, let me get this block over here. Um, I'm going to put the new cam in. And I have a feeling that this cam shim is going to be just fine with this cam. It sounds kind of silly, but I actually measured the length of the cam and it measured exactly the same as the one I took out. So generally speaking, you still have to check it. You still could be a little off, but this cam shim should be correct. And I think I checked it too. Let's see, where's my caliper? There it is. And just for my own idea here for reference, this cam shim is a 60 thousandths. So I'm going to put everything in place here. I don't know whether or not everything is going to seal up and be wonderful and fit. So I think, real quick like, I'm going to put a gasket on here. It really drives you nuts because oil just keeps running out of the motor. And right here where you're putting your nice fresh gasket. But truth of the matter is, it will seal up anyway. Okay, and that is the same kind of gasket as I had on this bike in the first place. So we'll see here. So I'm going to check the uh, 
the breather. And that, oh, that just feels perfect to me. What that is is ten thousandths. Um, with the crush of the gasket, you lose six thousandths. That would put it at four thousandths. It's really going to be at four or five. Factory says one to five. You're really good to go. It's not a big deal. But you just don't want to get a huge, huge gap in there, and you don't want it to be tight and bind. So, anyway, we're going to put some, uh, what do you call it here? Assembly lube on these lobes. And we'll probably put a little on the, little on the gear. There's exciting things happening in town. We're getting lots of sirens today. You just can't beat sirens, you know. So, there we go. And we'll look for the timing mark, which is right down here. And what we're going to do is put the, uh, the shim and the thrust washer in place. And I'm going to get down here on my face a little bit. Thank you. See if I can just slide this in place. And there it is in place. Um, can you break, can you see that with the camera mic, the two timing marks here? Can you see that? Okay, that is the timing mark on the pinion gear and the timing mark on the cam gear. Now, the breather gear was off one tooth. It's easiest to pull the breather gear out. Line these two up. You can pull the breather gear in and out, slide it in place. Oh, that was nice. Thank you, Jim. And there it is. Not bad at all. We're going to put a little assembly lube on this, uh, on the cam here. We don't want to hurt that new seal. And I just have a feeling it's going to be pretty close right off the bat. And there it is. So what we're going to do now is put a couple of uh, a couple of these screws in place, and then we can check the end play of the cam. So you just. Put them to contact and then just a light snug before pretty much um i think i think the final torque is supposed to be something like 80 inch pounds oh that's not much okay no it's not a big deal but i like to put three about three screws in here to check the end play enough to keep it square yep yeah. yep I'm pretty square. We can do that. Yeah, we'll put four in. I just want to make sure it's all flat down and good. Okay, now I can reach in there and feel it, see if there's any movement. Yes, there is. And I'd like to see about, I don't know, 11 to 14. Yeah, it's a little more than I'd like. 
14, 15, 16, let's see if that's 16. 16, 17, 18, let's try 18. Okay, that's a little bit more than I would like. Let's see if it's any bigger than that. 18. Here we go. 19. There we go. 19, 20, 21. Okay. Let's try 20. See if it's a 20. No. Yeah, it's at 19, I think. 19. Yeah, it's at 19. So what I'm going to do... No, it's not even 19. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5,000s to that cam shim. That was a 60,000 shim in there. And so I'll go through my little selection of cam shims. And I'll put in a 65. There's 55. Seventy. Fifty. <laughs> Let's hope I have a 65. That's close. Want a little more. 80. Let's see what I got in this bunch. I guess I've changed a few cams. 60. 60. 50, there's 70, 70, 60, 55, I'm sure I have a 65 here somewhere, 70, 50, There's 67 or 68. That's not bad. Same there. I think that's probably what will end up in there. All right. Let's get one of those out of there. See if we got any more in here. What's this one say? 70, and that looks like about all we got. All right. That's for a knuckle. Okay. All right. World's greatest zip ties. <clears throat> so here is a sixty nine, and here is a sixty eight. I'm going to use this one. So, what we're going to do, I don't know if I'm going to need my little puller or not. I was really figuring out and leaving this alone. Do you know where the puller is in there, Jim? Well, you do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's right on top of that other box of pullers. But I don't think you can get there from here right now. No. Yeah, you can take that thing down if you have to. Tell you what we can do. 
We're running out of time here. I can easily finish this up on the next video because uh, I don't appear to have the right cam shim. And we'll make sure that we take about five thousandths at least out of that uh, cam end play. So until then, I'll see you out on the road, but I'll be back shortly.